brother-in-law. This is Chris. Hello world. He's also a music composer and we'll be doing music. Exactly. No pressure. Singing all the songs. <laughs> Scouts of Saruman, right? So. trying to find coffee spot so Chris can teach me how to make Swiss mountain coffee which I'm told is quite an experience so shortly we shall all learn how to do it I'm not ready so we've decided this is the spot for our coffee big room is at the end of the hike Chris is just preparing <laughs> He's preparing our bench, he's doing the hard work. Yay, your name. <laughs> this view is pretty amazing. I know that one. <laughs> Maybe we can even watch the, the skiers come down. Cool, okay. Let me get the gear out. So getting out all of the equipment for um, Swiss Mountain Coffee. Of one Bialetti. And we also have one bag of, what coffee is this Chris? This is uh, Panama coffee. Panama coffee, okay cool. You, you can walk us through. Oh, is it? Oh, cool. We have one coffee grinder. Deeper in this bag, we have our, there it is, a burner. This is for heating up the coffee. Masks, of course, but there's also matches. Okay. 
Well, so basically I'm just grinding the coffees for like in a very cold, uh, fine or powdery grind because it's a uh, fairly mocha pot and that requires very fine ground coffee. Okay. While Chris is grinding, I'm going to unpack our, um, our Bunsen burner and then hopefully soon uh, figure out how to use it. <laughs> I think that's everything. I think that goes. This is not supposed to look like this, right? Not sure if that's doing anything. But... That didn't work. Second. Round two. This is not good. Okay, so after an unsuccessful and slightly dangerous attempt <laughs> at making Swiss mountain coffee, um, we've decided to rather be safe and go down for a traditional high sea shopkey at the restaurant instead. Um, it turns out that um, the seal on the gas canister wasn't working properly because it was below freezing temperatures, or well it's freezing temperatures here, it's below zero. Well that was fun, kind of. Slightly disappointing, but uh, now it's okay. <laughs> well, too bad for the coffee, but at least we drink it at home. Yes. Yeah. Then right here, up here, and then we took. Wait, like the all the way there? Yeah. Oh yeah, because we, we like ended up there. Yeah, true. What? Yeah, we took that way here, then here. And that was the weird yeah. corner, and then up. And then all And then here. down to this place. Huh. Oh, nice. And then we take the cable car down from this place. Number C. Oh, yeah. That's an easy one. Good morning, my name is Saninka and this is my channel. I wanted to share with you the reason that my Swiss Mountain Coffee did not work in Engelberg as you can see in the video and hopefully my lessons are your lessons to take with you when you go winter hiking um, or on other winter excursions. So essentially what I learned was that we were not using the gas that was best suited for the temperatures. As you can see in the video we're using this green gas canister, which is actually the summer gas um, because the combination of the types of gases inside, which is propane and butane, it performs much better at temperatures between 10 and 40 degrees. So minus eight was definitely a little bit of a stretch for this guy. Um, and because of the boiling points and um, like the pressure needed inside the canister versus outside, 
um, it's what led to like the spluttering effect when we did light the gas instead of you know heating um, the water that we needed for the coffee. So ideally we should have been using a different gas mixture that's more suited for the colder temperatures like the Primus power gas. So here the gas combination is propane and isobutane rather than just the normal butane that's found in the other one. So the isobutane is a lower uh, boiling point temperature which means that it can perform better in colder temperatures. So the range for this guy is from minus 15 to about plus 25 degrees. So it actually also has a nice temperature range. And what you can also do before you start cooking just to make sure that the gas is warm enough, you can take it out of your backpack where it's probably very cold and you can put it inside your insulator layer and it can warm up a little bit in there and then you can use it. And then you ideally want to use it a little bit further away from a structure. You can dig a bit of a crater in the snow. And if you have a windshield or wind protector, that's also very, very helpful because uh, it helps to keep the flame protected. With all of that being said though, if you're doing a lot of outdoor excursions in very cold weather, it's probably better to invest in a liquid fuel kitchen. So this is a gas fuel kitchen, but the liquid fuel kitchen is more reliable and it's more stable and it will probably go a lot further. But now we know. <laughs> I am still learning in this new environment. So if you have any tips, please leave them in the comments below and I will take them with me the next time that I want to try and make mountain coffee at very, very cold temperatures.